Okay, so now we're obviously in the cabin. It's comfortable, it's spacious. It's kind of got a bit of a wow factor, to be honest. Um, in terms of the gadgets and all of the dials, it, it's kind of just, it's a magpie's dream, basically. <laughs> in terms of other things, you've got um, sat-nav, obviously. Uh, you've got everything in terms of Bluetooth connection for your mobile phone, music, that kind of thing. Um, the seats themselves, very upright, actually for such a low car um, you know this is quite a low sporty looking car you wouldn't think it has much headroom but it does have a surprising amount um, the seats are quite upright comfortable happily driving in them for sort of two three hours without stopping um, and I think one of the main things even though from the outside perhaps this cavern may look a little bit small um, there's a total of 14 windows would you believe in this car um, which means that the you know the inside is very light it's very airy it gives it a much much larger sense um, when you're actually sitting in the car than what it is the interior is is just quality to be honest you've got a range of textures and materials in here it's not like some other executive cars where the you know the interior although the driving experience is great the interiors are just a little bit basic a little bit blocky As you well know, we love our gadgets here at AJB and uh, one of the great little things about this car is the, the simple heads-up display. Basically kind of like an augmented reality setup, it pops up between the steering wheel and the windscreen and it gives you vital information, it gives you your speed, it gives you your cruise control, what it's set at and then thirdly it also shows you the satellite navigation, sat nav um, notifications when they come up just so you don't miss them. Um, it's pretty simple, it's basically just projected onto a screen, you can see through the screen, it's obviously see-through and what that does is, you know, it, you find yourself just looking forward and at the road, concentrating more on the road rather than at your dash checking your speed and things like that because you've got all this information on this pop-up screen in front of you. Um, it's just a really good little feature, simple to do and uh, it's one of the things we love about this car. In terms of other gadgets, you've got so much to choose from, you can spend so long in here. Um, we've obviously got a, a race centre console which has got our automatic box in which has then got paddle shift for the manual gears. Um, we've then got basically a selection joystick with um, options for our sat nav, radio, address book, traffic or if we want to stream media from our mobile phone, that kind of thing. Um, obviously got our usual dual climate which you kind of expect in this car. Um, in terms of all the controls and stuff, everything is where I think you'd want it and where you'd expect it to be. Around every sort of cluster of buttons there's then a dial where you can then choose um, basically up and down, scroll through options, that kind of thing. Um, my only nag would obviously be, you know, it's not touch screen on the, on the main display. I don't know why, it's one of my bugbears on all cars that have a ginormous system. You just want to touch it, you want to use it, and unfortunately the Citroen DS5 doesn't have that ability, uh, not in this car at least, so that is one disappointment. In terms of the actual ride, as I said, you know, it's very, very comfortable. The hold for such a heavy car on the road is, is pretty spectacular, to be honest. Um, it grips to the road like anything, there's no problems in the corners, it's very smooth, very limited body roll um, and you know the car sits a little bit high I think personally um, and I guess that's where you know in theory the four wheel drive mode comes in, you know you're not going to be going across fields or anything but in the snow, um, maybe on a slippery surface, you know grass at your country fair or something like that you might want uh, to put it into four wheel drive um, but you know overall the the ride and the handling we have been very impressed with. Um, to be honest, the gearbox not quite so much. There is quite a lag in auto mode when it's uh, pulling away. Put it in sport and it is a lot tighter, let's be honest. Um, put it in sport and manual and use the paddle shifts. Still a touch of lag there, but it's you know it does make the car a completely different beast. Kind of more of a driver's car, I guess, rather than just for poodling along the motorway. Um, and you know it does make it a lot more fun to drive. Okay, there we have it. That's the Citroen DS5. To be honest, we've kind of fell in love with it over the last week. 
Um, it turns heads, it looks great. It's one of those cars where, for us, you know, you could easily stop, the wheels would in turn, you'd take off, and you'd next be appearing in Judge Dredd or the Jets and something like that. It really is a nice looking car, it's futuristic, it looks great. Um, there's a few minor gripes around the boot and space and things like that, but overall, with this ride quality, um, you know, the wealth of um, interior that's in here, all the different materials and textures, you know, it looks 